the, uh, uh, the more uh, top-heavy matches. It was not the upheaval build. It was just the uh, shadow, shadow word, and um, um, fatal bonds build. So the upheaval will be interesting to see. Funic will go with the dark seer here. Another hero we don't get to see all too often, but a little bit of a treat as Ishkafel will be in the off lane. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good pick. I think it could work really well this game. What? Why do you? Why? What makes the dark seer particularly strong here? Well, I think the tri lane of C9 probably won't be able to force out a Dark Seer, especially like, you know, they don't think Rasta Warlock really shut it down too well, and maybe they think, maybe they know that Warlock's probably going to be in the off lane. So that way, Dark Seer only has to fight up against a dual lane with Rasta Doom, which definitely won't force him out. Better get so ready. So he'll have a pretty good laning phase, and um, this hero's just pretty good in general against the heroes of C9. Like, it's I like Dark Seer a lot against Doom, because later on you're going to get that wall of replica where you'll be able to um, duplicate Doom's auras to, into your team. And Doom usually has like two to three auras which are really beneficial. Yeah. So that's that's always something. That yeah, he tends to go aura items and then you've got uh, all the creeps that he can soak up that usually give additional auras. So that is a, a really good point there. Five man smoke from Na'Vi. They'll rotate down into the Radiant Jungle and C9 will uh, not be looking to defend. They'll just move straight into the lanes. It will be Eternal Envy on the Doom in the safe lane, joined by Pylai Dai's Shadow Shaman. Uh, mid will be Fada on the Viper and looks like you're right about this dual offlane. Bone 7 on the Nature's Prophet and that's Owie. 2000 on the Warlock. And Na'Vi invading in. They will get scouted out. Pylai Dai does break the smoke. But uh, he will be just fine for now. Are they going to put some wards down here? So far, they haven't placed anything. Looks like they're actually going to be uh, aggressive try line. Uh, okay, yeah, there's a nice... Oh, that's a Radiant Observer here in the tree line. And I yeah, think it looks this... like it. I'm not sure. It's going to be interesting to see how his laning phase goes. I think, I think Navi definitely has the better lanes. But that being said, I think C9's um, advantage is going to push out in the mid game once they get their ultimates going. So if Navi can force a couple of kills early and maybe force uh, Warlock and Rasta to leave their lanes, then it could be good. But I like what C9 did. They have Rasta with the boots first on the safe lane. So he's going to be pretty safe from just ganks in general. And it, hopefully Doom can find some sort of farm. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. Uh, Navi will do the tri lane of FNG on the tree, Vanscore on the Skywrath, and of course it is Havost on the position one Weaver. Dendi DP mid once again, starting to become a signature thing here as he's been doing it more often than not. And Funic will be in the solo safe lane, actually grabs a double damage rune to get things started. And against just the solo bone seven, he'll find some early farm rotations towards the mid lane on both sides of the coin. FNG coming around the backside. That's a, an over, or what the hell is that ability called? Leech Seed on the Fada. And this could very well be your first blood. Tree will punch him down. And that secures the kill. Navi off to the races as they pick up an early first blood. Huge kill for Trian. That's kills like that are what makes Trian so strong. If you can just get ahead early and get the high levels of tree armor before your yeah, enemies are really ready for it. Yeah, uh, that's especially with the boots first tree, that's what you're looking for. Chase him down, and especially a slow hero like Viper. He did not... Oh, he did grab that first point in Corrosive Skin, actually. He was a little bit more suited to deal with that, but yeah, there's no getting away from that Wrath of the Tree. Now he'll rotate down bottom. They king up Pylai, die. There is a Leech Seed available, but he takes Ether Shock straight away, and that will repel him. And, uh, well, we'll see a stat about how seldom Warlock is indeed picked up. FNG oh, no. trying to reinitiate, has to go back. Oh, dude, misses the War Stomp. That's uh, a lot that's of mana. Painful. That's a yeah. lot of mana. And a pretty big missed opportunity. Van score is pretty low, and I think, yeah, I don't know if it would have been a kill, but it would have been close. And that is the issue with the War Stomp early on. He is just so low on mana. Now you can't devour, and you don't have mana for that Scorched Earth if you get manned up upon. Oh, that stomp. Those, those stomps are the worst when you miss. Yep. Fun at getting very aggressive here in the top lane. Diving past the tower and pushing back Bone 7. And he will be able to surge back to safety and we'll take a few tower shots on the way out. But he is the last hit leader here. Having a good time in the safe lane and continuing to impress. Yeah, Dark Seer does great against Furion. It's one of the old matchups, but... Funic Dark Seer is pretty, um, pretty famous. So yeah. I'm sure he'll have a, a great game and get an early mech for his team. Yeah. Now, one issue for Na'Vi is Dendi's actually struggling a bit in the mid lane. Looking at that CS difference, Fada 11-5 and five versus the 6-1 and one Dendi. And wow. keep in mind, Fada was the victim of the first blood, so Dendi even had a little bit of extra gold from the assist and has had more time in the lane to farm. I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, Viper is obviously is quite the last hitter with that Nether Toxin, but atypical for Dendi to be this far behind. Hey, it actually is doing really far now. It's a little surprising, I think. Maybe he sacrificed a lot of CS when he went for the kill. 
Yeah. And he kind of like missed a wave or something. Very possible. But a slow start for the Death Prophet. Uh, on this off lane, Havos is the last hit leader now. 16 CS on him and Doom not finding much. So this was one of the issues that you were concerned about. Nowhere for Eternal Envy to farm. Six and zero on him in the first three minutes. Definitely not the kind of farm that Eternal Envy was hoping to find. Um, it's not really hoping to find, but it's really not that bad. He's, you know, he's almost level four, or he's halfway to level four. He might be a combo too. And Dendi getting dove by Fada. He'll continue to land the auto attack. Dendi oh, sits no. the bottle, survives for now. Now Fada gets turned around upon Vanscore. TP's in, and they'll make it a one for nil the other way. Howie 2000 takes a little harassment, but he will survive. Great support for Navi. Dendi barely survives, but they do turn it around, and they're supporting this mid lane like crazy, as they need to. Yeah, DP is um, yeah, DP is a really strong laner, but she's also very easy to uh, like harass and gank in the early levels before because she, she has such low movement speed before she gets levels of uh, witchcraft. Yep. But that was that was pretty greedy of uh, Fada to kind of do that tower for that kill. Yeah. If uh, this was a lesser team and there was no TP, probably would have been an easier kill. But uh, I mean, I still, I still yeah, don't think that probably would have died. But I uh, mean, maybe uh, without definitely without the Vanguard TP, he, you know, he, he, he would have lived or you know, limped out of there. Yep. Uh, it's funny because still running a lot of momentum shape. here. Furion was forced to retreat back to the base, and Warlock will rotate back towards the top lane to try and help him out. But so far, Owie has not been too effective. He's found two CS and. Dust now gets level 3 as he finds some solo XP, but hasn't really been able to find an edge anywhere. Looking at his build, uh, he does have 2 points in Shadow Word and 1 in Upheaval, opting not to get Fatal Bonds yet. Yeah, and he might opt for a build that doesn't have too much of Upheaval this game, be just because he's up against Darkseer and Weaver, who can you know go to max movement speed and, you know, as they wish. Yeah, the thing with upheaval though is that first point is not really that great. The buildup is pretty slow. At level two is really when it starts kicking into high gear, and that slow becomes a, a little more effective in terms of the, the time it takes to be a serious slow. Are you a warlock expert? Well, I was I was reading up on it a little bit. Like, is that is upheaval? I was under the impression level one uh, upheaval is not a, a value point, but now you're making me second guess myself. Well, Peter. it's not a value point in the sense like. You know, you get the same upgrade from level one to level two that you do from level zero to level one. Yeah. But I think it's the slow is it's pretty good if you get a couple seconds of channeling going. Yeah, well, that that can be a big if in the. And there's but, no um. Yeah. I mean, the cap is like what 84. I yeah, I think so. Yeah, 84. So I mean, you can keep it going for a while, even at level one. You just gotta lock them in there somehow. Yeah, somehow. They actually don't have a lot of lockdown on this team. Basically, just the shackles and the. Sprout. Big chaotic offering. Yeah, I guess Sprout can lock him on top of the upheaval. Uh, so many people are picking Viper in this uh, European Star Ladder. I'm, I'm not the big fan, the biggest fan of this hero. What's what's your beef with Viper, Peter? I just he doesn't do anything. Like, he just got this. He just right clicks and slows. That's almost exactly what Fear told me about Viper. Oh, he just fear, doesn't do fear anything. Hates, fear hates Viper. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I pick Viper sometimes, but Fear is just like, all right, well, I don't know why you're this hero. It's the worst hero in the game. Like, I mean, he's a lane dominator. That's really what he brings to the table. But if he doesn't get that early momentum, it's not so fun. Twilight Die gets hits. initiated upon by FNG, and oh, Skyrath is here to follow up. This will probably be a dead Shadow Shaman. Yep, Tree's just going to branch him down, and that will make it three to nil as Navi get another one up on the scoreboard. Skyrath the top, top towers 1600 hurt. range. What is that? Who made Broken? this? <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. This is uh, you know, Radiant's top you know, tower is taking hero. hits. <laughs> I like that. It, it is very reminiscent of an S2 hero, actually. That's uh, it's a good analogy. I don't, I don't know how many people out there will get it, but... It's a good shot, it's insane. But yeah. now he's committing to the tower push down bottom here. Yeah, and it's a big rotation. They did commit up top to try and defend against the darks here, so now they don't have a lot of resource to get back down towards the buff. They will pop the glyph, but Dendi's still with plenty of time on the exorcism. They'll do some considerable damage here. Looks like Cloud9 will set their sights on the mid-tier mid one, but uh, of course they will not be able to push Radiant nearly as quickly. And this will be a very right early now. tower kill, but completely uncontrolled. Radiant lost one of them bottom towers. Dyer's mid tower. Yeah, they're, 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 they're playing so well. It's like yeah, bottom oh, movement. It's it's nice bottom yeah, yeah, I like it. Well, getting the new guy that FNG that comes in. Dyer's structure is looking fortified. Doing really well. All right, here we go. The upheaval coming through. Dyer's and Owie tower can channel it up. They are doing a lot of damage to this tower. Double damage on Fada. 
though. They may still be able to bring it down. Navi could use their glyph already, perhaps hoping for a deny. Dendi will find it with a stray auto attack. Oh, man. Nicely done. And now Eternal Envy goes forward on the Vanscore. He is level 6, pops the ultimate, and there will be a Wrath of Nature flying through. Vanscore pinging out for a deny. And he will head up top. Funix should be able to punch him in the face. Yeah, there you go. Sayonara Vanscore. But again, nicely done by Navi. As soon as uh, Cloud9 grab a little momentum, back to back denies. Funix going um, Midas on Darkseer. Wow. Is rushing Look at that stat. 85 games with a 72% win rate. How do you stop Funic? He has been out of control recently. It doesn't seem to matter which heroes you ban. There's still something left in the pool that you can trash it with. Navi's, Navi's been out of control. Nobody can stop them, so... I'm sure Funic's a big part of it, but I think the rest of this team is playing very, very well. Yeah? I haven't seen any um, insane Havos like Tower Dives recently. Yeah, he, he tends to do it when they're more the, the heavy favorites against uh, the underdogs. You'll see Havos go man mode. But in the more even matchups where the bets are closer to 50-50, he's been raining it in a little bit, you know, playing uh, playing a, a nice safe game. And, oh, mid lane. Looks like we'll see Dendi get initiated upon. Fodder with a haste rune. Will throw out the Viper Strike. Living Armor will buy Dendi some time. But will it be enough to survive? It's looking pretty grim, although he is pretty damn speedy. Makes it to the high ground. No sprout from Bone 7. Fada wants to dive in, but he's getting fogged in the trees. Dire Courier flying through. Needs to be a little careful there. Dendi will get his bottle off. Will he be able to sip it up? To no avail. Where's the support? They dove deep for that. And Navi will finally come in to try and punish it. Bone 7 will get chased down by Funic. And it looks like it could at least be a one for one. Havost will go blow for blow with Fada. And we'll see if follow up can get here. Darkseer does manage to finish off Bone 7. And Havost will uh, give up and commence the retreat. Space created for Rasta. He's got his level 6, he's got his mana boots. Maybe he'll push top tower. Certainly thinking about it. So steps in the right direction for Cloud9. The rune serving uh, a, a big role for Fauna. The double damage helping in that mid uh, skirmish and then the haste rune there. Basically making that whole thing possible. Rasta wards come down to the top tower. And Dendi will TP in and they will be able to clean up these wards. Get a little bit of extra farm and this tower will stay safe. Can they grab the Rasta? No, he TP's out in time and will be A-OK, -okay, but close call, vacuum was coming. Looks like they'll just uh, push top tower again, see if they can. Yep, exorcism is available, so why the hell not? And Dendi with four points in Witchcraft, actually keeping a Crypt Swarm on level three, so this is a pretty potent exorcism, considering he's only level eight. Mm -hmm. He won't even need it for this shape. tower. Maybe they'll try and push the tier two if Cloud9 don't contest. Cloud9 will definitely contest the tier 2. I think they'll probably, they're definitely gonna let this tier 1 go though. It's, it was actually like yeah. already. Radiant got one last I know, Navi will just back out. Certainly right about that. Thought they may try and force something uh, with the DP ult. Perhaps they'll need it down bottom as Cloud9 is getting close to this tower. One thing Pilot I need to be careful of is when you're playing in here like Rasta against Trian, he needs to make sure that he uses his wards effectively. And that's gonna be with your team in big pushes. Just like a push like that, unless you're gonna finish the tower off. Oh, initiate. Yep, down bottom, bow, he gets two, and Viper starts a little armor, we'll find some time. There's the old pick from the Warlock, finishes off the boast, Mystic Flare comes in, and that's a dead Viper. A one for one to get it started. Even Trian now goes down to the wrath of the Warlock. But they will be able to clean this up. Dendi with his ultimate. He's still alive for now. The golem coming in. He's still do a fair amount of damage. Doom falls around the backside. And they will kind of kite the golem around. Let the exorcism go. So do the damage. And they're keeping this tower safe. Doing a good job pulling the attention of the golem. It is rather slow. So easy to kite around. They will bring it down. A nice 100 gold bounty. And Navi will take a successful team fight. And they defend the tower. Now Owie. He gets left behind. He has a TP scroll. But I don't think he'll be able to use it to much avail. Leech Sia and a Crypt Storm will bring him down. Some space created in the top lane as Cloud9 will commence the Rat Dota and find a Tier 1 tower in the opposite lane that they thought they Dyer's might. Top tower. Yeah, that's one thing the Navi kind of lacks is they don't really have much catch for the split Dyer's push. Lost they, have, the top um, tower. they don't really have like a, a true initiator. Yeah, now the boast coming oh. in on the Bone 7. No way to interrupt the TP, but doing a fair bit of damage here. Nitch's Prophet really tanking. He's got double null tally. You don't see that too frequently. It's, oh my gosh, it's the European pub build. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's I like a fair and they, they buy a bunch of Null Talismans, and then they buy a Blade Mail. Oh. And then they go for like, uh, like a Maelstrom or something, or normal yeah, like DPS Yeah, he has the Blade Mail complete. That, so, why? Like, explain <laughs> the value versus the right. like regular Maelstrom into Blink. So, like everyone else, I was really confused by this for quite a while. Um, I had to have my European teammate Zai explain it to me. Uh, okay. But I think it's more or less like... So you have like some decent amount of stats from your old talismans and you have a good amount of right clicks so you can kind of fight. 
and you often have a blade now that keeps people off of you in team fights, and it kind of stops them from going on you early on. So that way you can kind of do stuff. It's, <laughs> it's, I, I'm not, a, I'm not personally, first I'm not a fan of it, but I mean, it's it been does make popular. him tanky. He's sitting on 15 armor right now with the Basilius and the blade mail, which is pretty significant. It's a, it's, it's a pretty absurd build. I, We'll see how it works for him. I mean, Bone7 is a guy that tends to be rather innovative with his builds. He was known for that armlet clockwork for quite some while, so I'm not yeah, surprised to see him doing it, but... Mask of Madness Batrider. Um, yeah. Satanic Void. Yep, yeah, yeah, all sorts of fun stuff. Fada with invisibility ah. ability. Mishake on the band score. There's a lot of follow-up here. Fada, what are you doing? He gets silenced right away. Mystic Flare comes down. I'm trying to keep you out. There's an overgrowth just Somebody in the nick of time. Fada will fall. Van score lives, and that was ambitious to say the least. It's a game, that's a game losing mistake. Right yep, yeah, uh, Rasta Wards come down to the bottom lane, and again, Cloud9 will be repelled. EE e. off to the side, does have a Blink Dagger to go with his Arcane Boots. Ultimate at the ready. He gets pinged out, they know he's hiding over there. Dendi will clean up the wards. Tower stays e? standing. Holy. Now he's in deep. He'll try to TP out, and he will survive. No vacuum from Funicle, he's already used it, so. All right, EE e. survives, but another awkward position, and still a good hold from Navi. Yeah, once again, Rastorwood wasted on a tower that's just going to get killed over a train. Yep, and here we go, Bone 7 on the Havos, pops the blade mail, and nothing Havos can do besides just run in circles. He will get silenced, that interrupts the TP, and now the blade mail's off. Well, Havos yeah. will just finish him off. That is part of the problem here. He will get a one for one as Vanscore uh, underestimates the damage output, I suppose, but... I don't know, it feels like kind of a one-trick pony once the blade mail's off. That I love that stat, I love it. Ninth time he's built the blade mail, every occurrence has in by a European, there you go. Down bottom, Funnick gets caught by a dude, and this should seal his fate. I sort of let will finish him off with a level death. But yeah, there you go. It is a European thing. Fucking Euros. <laughs> well, we've got uh, 2,000 gold, 3,000 experience lead for Navi. Uh, the tower count is all tied Radio up to a piece as Dendi uh, starts to pressure the mid lane. FNG's Trian has gone for a Gem of True Sight as his first big item following uh, the Arcane Boots. Dendi in the mid, will get the out. Dendi will interrupt it with the War Stomp, apart. and there's Bone 7 right there with the blade now. Well, Dendi yep, will just walk away, and the Living Armor mixed with his Phase Boots are enough oh, to ensure oh, his survival. He's ready to initiate with the, the Golem drop. Yeah. Alright. I guess Blade Mail is also pretty good against Death Prophet since she can't control that damage output once the Ghosts are Yeah, it is good against Death Prophet for yeah. sure. That's something, but uh, a couple of big items picked up here. Weaver, 15-minute Lincoln, so both finding a lot of space this game, and he is number one on net worth, but this is a pretty decent timing. And you talked about some of the issues with Weaver, and with a farm, with farm like this, he'll be able to come online and start moving into a Desolator pretty quickly. Big team fight a lot to happen. Yep, oh. FNG gets hexed up as he goes into an initiate with the Overgrowth, and he pops forward. War Stomp on the two, Havos now caught inside of the uh, stun from the Warlock. They'll finish off Skyrath with the 2 0 get things started. Mech is used to buy Havos some time. But this tower looks like a real fall in Cloud9. Taking two for nil as they commence the team fight. That was really nice. They have that like sentry placed by Ali. Uh, right in front of the tower. They saw the screen and was trying to get in there with the, with the overgrowth. Yep. And where did the gem end up? It was picked up by Pylai Die. So that's actually a really big oh, team fight. Oh, Trian had a gem? Yep. Huge net worth swing right there. Oh, wow. That's that's a little scary for Navi. That's a big investment. That's that's a really early gem pickup too. So yeah, like it's pretty cool what C9 has done here with their lineup. Um, they have Jerry on Trians, so that's a lot. Of, you know, that's a lot of stuff in your tower. You have the Rasta Wars, that's some more stuff in your tower. And then if you try and fight into it, you have this big ass golem that drops on top of you. And like trying to team fight into that is really really difficult. Yeah, the only issue for Cloud9 is that it's very cooldown based. So if they whiff some of those ultimates, uh, that can that can prove their time. But Bone 7 up top, they'll pop the Blade now, and to little avail, he'll just wait until it expires. The Van Score drops the Mystic Flare, and it's another easy kill on Bone 7. And so I far in this game, would. I have to admit, I'm not sold on this Fury I wish build. you would buy a Teleport Scroll. This Dyer's is like the third, the third time, down. I think. He could have just escaped with an old Teleport Scroll, but he can't use his um, Teleport ability because he keeps getting silenced by Skyrim. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You gotta, you gotta carry on that TP. You'll see a lot of uh, Furions just carry on the TP in general in case you get caught uh, in a bad situation with your teleport on cooldown, so you can still take an escape. Yeah, and you can always TP, you know, grab the courier, and then you know, port out with the normal port. 
Yeah, that's true. With that, Nathi will move into the Roche Pit. Feeling pretty safe with Bone 7 in the grave. Uh, no Wrath of Nature either. Exorcism deployed. It is a level 2 Exorcism. The Roche falls pretty quickly here. No Medallion, but really no Medallion needed. And this will be an early Ages, probably going the way of the most. Yes, indeed. The Navi. It's all well, close to tied up, 9 to 10, but they will take a little edge here, utilize that dire advantage, and... Well, Bot Nine have done a good job before Roche. It was just about zeroed out in gold. Still a pretty big experience edge the way of the Dire. Is that a blink dagger on Owie? Yeah, it sure is. Level yeah. 8 Warlock with a blink on Brown Boots. Okay, it's uh, pretty, I'll probably go for an Axe next. The two Golems down. Yeah, uh, the Axe is pretty damn good on Warlock. Oh, here we go. Oh, still a little trouble here. Lincoln's already popped. Highlight Dice sets it up. He gets the Living Armor. But now Viper Strike comes out. Close. Can he get off a time lapse? Nope, we'll save it. That Fox the Agent. And we'll be pretty much wasted here. All five heroes of Cloud9 ready. And Ooh, we'll go to. Yeah, and Hvost will get off a time lapse with so much damage coming his way. He Four. will fall. And can they get punished as well? Blink forward from Pilot Guy. He is low on mana. And the rest of Cloud9 uh, converging on top of Bone 7 will chop him down. Another two for Nero. Looks like Navi may run away with a pretty quick victory, but Cloud9 right there with a response, and that's a back to back team fights they've taken. Technical difficulties. Yeah, the team fight from C9 is pretty impressive. Well, I was going to say that uh, I was trying to dodge tower. fights based on when uh, C9 has their Warlock ultimate, but they didn't even have that fight. Uh, Weaver was just totally out of position, and Death Prophet didn't have his ultimate because they used it on Roshan, so they were in no position to fight. Yeah, that was just a, a total waste of the Aegis, and now Havos' farm will uh, get slowed down a little bit more. Does he have anything on the Courier? Yeah, okay, he had his power tread, so that's at least something minimizing some of the loss, but mm, very unfortunate. Like you said, not the ideal time to fight. Navi will rotate up towards the top tier too, as it looks like Cloud9 could start to commence some pushing. They're still hanging on to this gem, and let's just take a glance at the vision right now. Cloud9 have a very aggressive ward down in the mid lane they place after taking down the tier 2 tower. A little bit of vision of the bottom rune, though it is about to expire, and a lane ward here down in the bottom lane. Dire vision, they have one observer down, and it's right outside the Roche pit. Now that Roche is dead, not going to give them a huge amount of intel. That early gem pickup is really proving to bite them in the ass. Yeah, it's always a risk, and maybe he should have just used the D-Ward and then kind of left it behind, but... It's a... Treant's a really good gem carrier, but this is, it's a shame he died, like, instantly. Yeah, I mean, Cloud9 were just ready there, as you mentioned, that Sentry Ward set up that whole fight uh, to take that bottom Tier 1 tower. Owie will move into a point booster, so well on his way to that Aghanim Scepter. And Bone 7 now just moves into a Maelstrom, so it's an odd opener, but he'll now transition into something more reminiscent of a standard Prophet build. Yeah, so I actually really like how E is keeping the Centaur uh, War Stomp. It lets him catch split pushers. Like, so generally I would recommend Weaver to split push the map here and kind of just farm up away from his team. But he can't because he didn't count as a miss here. Yep, they'll find Dendi. Uh, Shiva's Guard picked up by Eternal Envy to start it off. Dendi deals with the winning armor, pops his door, so that does five time for support to come in. Uh, even the upheaval used here, but it just doesn't matter. Uh, ter or, pardon me, Eternal Envy helps secure the kill, and it is Fada that gets the last hit onto the Nature's Prophet. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Bone 7 and Havos going blow for blow. He will force up the time lapse. Blade Mail deployed, and that will quell the push. Zoning TP. Didn't even take it. He's just back in. Yep. And Eternal Envy goes right in on the Funic, pops oh, the Duke. Pause. Did he do pause. He do the creep, right? Is that what happened there? <laughs> Oh yes, man, Owie 2000 pops the ultimate, but it's kind of a waste of Warlock gold. Oh, back to back failed ults there from Cloud9, that's unfortunate. That would have been a kill on Funnick had he ejected with the Doom, but... Well, he showed that creep to his boss. He's a really tiny model, like he's, he's hard to click on. True. Dyer yeah, those have that little old man body. Yes, but they will at least be able to get a tier 2 power out of it. They've got the golem here, up evil, slowing him down. And they work out the glyph, but out come the Rock of Wards. Now Dendi comes straight in, pops his ultimate. He gets Piper struck right away. Dyer Eternal Enemy in the front line will secure the tower kill. The boss is coming in, wants to initiate here, but the Rock of Wards are on the backside, are actually doing some damage to the follow up from Navi. Cloud9 now on the back foot, Funnick pops the wall with a nice vacuum, Ion Shell, but that's going to be the edge, and Death Pop is well advanced, where FNG gets caught, will pop the ultimate, that buys him some time, but it's a very defensive overthrow. Funnick looking to finish off Alley, he might be able to do it, he gets the kill, but it'll cost him everything and anything. Meanwhile, down bottom, the boat, blow for blow with Eternal MP, he still has the time lapse available, he should be able to survive, but... 
the phrase, but at what cost, comes to mind here, PPD, as Navi get cleaned up once more, and oh, the most takes the wolf, wolf stomp. Again, still has the time lapse, but if he gets crowd control down, it's not going to matter. Living armor, proving effective here. And both will start turning around on the pylon dive. And now Fada comes in. It's a lackluster time lapse, to say the least. And Viper secures the kill as the boat is in no man's land. That will be a one for four trade. And Cloud9 get the tower. Yeah, they're rich now, too. Viper on the side. Oh, it seems like they're just. They just don't have enough. I, bottom I, I was, getting the business. I'm not sure if it's. I think it's probably just Trian that's pretty useless this game. And Darkseer doesn't really seem like he's. You know, he's being that effective either. Like, he's just getting, like, doomed in teamfights or, um, you know, controlled by Rasta, I guess. I don't know. I just, I feel like there's a lot of Navi teamfight where just, there's just not, it's just not, like, connecting. Yeah, Cloud9 just have the initiation advantage. As soon as Eternal exactly. Envy picked up that Blink Dagger, it seems like that Cloud9 have gotten the jump on Navi in pretty much every engagement. Yeah, that's going to be the problem. They don't have, like, the, 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 the initiator to really get the fights going. Like, if they had someone to jump in and then Darkseer could, you know, pop in and get a good wall vacuum. Um, yeah, they, they're just kind of like, their initiation is just them running in. And yeah, that's I mean, not maybe, gonna work against Warlock and Viper. And maybe if Tree can get a Blink Dagger, that'll be their initiator. I guess that Clockwork really would have been a, a great final pick and a smart blast ban from uh, Cloud9, which sort of forced the hand to do either a Dark Seer uh, or a Centaur. The Hand of Midas from Funic also hasn't really kicked in yet. He's picked up the mech and now on his way to a BKB, but still hasn't really seen the huge dividends that you would expect. His farm isn't bad, but not great at either, as now Eternal Envy uh, and um, Bone7 have taken the first and second seats on the net worth chart. Looks like Cloud9 will group up and finish off the outer towers for uh, Navi. Alright, so Navi's, or Navi's trying to do the right thing. They're trying to dodge fights. They know they're not strong enough to fight. They need Definitely some more items on Weaver. I'm not sure what he's going for. Maybe a Manta. Um. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't imagine he's going for a Diffusal here, so I guess Manta makes the most sense. Yeah, probably Manta. S1. Yep. Oh, in mid lane, Van score. He gets caught. Living Armor buys him some time, but Shaq will hold him in place as Eternal Envy commences Radiant's the fiery sword. One last auto days. attack brings him down. Actually, no the other shot the secures the last hit, like and this. that's just another Dyer's one for no trade. Tower. Navi will minimize their losses. You know it's just a support pickoff. But still, good news for Cloud9. Right Any thoughts Dyer's about this build for folks? I mean, Desolator down. seems to be that core item that most folks tend to prefer after the Lincolns. Well, I think he wanted a lot of those things. Uh oh, Lincolns will get broken, and there's the Doom. Nowhere for Host to go, and they will just chop it down. Oh, derp. Yeah, you're right. Is he really the best suited to do that, though? I mean, he's the best suited on his team. I'm not sure. Oh, action mid. Oop. Yep, right there. I was like contemplating there. Shadow Shaman will get picked off, and Dendi on the run. He's not be able to finish him off quite yet, but a sprout on the FNG. Pops and overthrows, but he'll really connect with anything. Now Van score in some trouble as Eternal Envy comes in. Shivas comes out, and Navi are on the back foot. They'll head towards the base. They will survive, but not uh, not much coming out in return. Sure, they pick off the Shadow Shaman. I guess that will delay the push for Cloud9 as he does have wards available. Even the Shadow Shaman, he's just about to have an Ag Scepter after his boy. That yeah, is pretty he has a response. Wow. Oh, this, uh, There's the Viper Ag. I mean, I feel like maybe Darkseer should be the one grabbing the Diffusal here to deal with, if it's just purely to deal with the, deal with the goal, and they need Hoboz to be a damage dealer here. And this will kind of limit his damage output compared to something like a Desolator. Yeah, I think it was kind of a plan C kind of deal for Havos. Like, he, you know, he had a good start, just farming his lane, and then they took some team fights and he just kept dying, to whether it was Doom or Rasta or... I, yeah. It probably just wasn't a very good Weaver game, like, to be honest. Yeah, um, the other issue he's going to run into is by the time he gets that Diffusal, Owie will just about have his Ag Scepter, only 1,300 gold to go. And that's two golems, and Diffusal does have a cooldown, so there's at least some time that there's a golem running around smacking people in the face. The timing is kind of the key with that item as well when you're up against a Warlock. We will see initiation from Navi. Yule's out onto the Warlock. They'll get silenced and just try to TP home, and Howie might be able to make it. No, the vacuum will interrupt him, and that will ensure his death. So a good gank from Navi. That slows down the Ag's timing I was talking about, so a, a valuable kill there, and they will move right into the Roche pit. Roche coming up in just about 12 seconds, but of course they are not privy to the timer. Will they know though? Will they know? They are going to camp it out. Nature's nope. prophet was trying to scout it, but 
I'll stay in all chat. Hold on. Top towers getting beat down. So unfortunate. So close yet so far. Little tree and wandering his way around. We'll actually connect with the Wrath of Nature on the FNG. Cheeky little plays there from Bone Seven. But yeah, Navi looking for some way to regain momentum. Dendi picks up a Vitality Booster, probably trying to save up for a heart, but still a little ways off that big item pickup. And Cloud9 still hold, uh, sitting pretty at about a 7,500 gold uh, and experience lead. Yeah, Cloud9's doing great. They're in a really good position to win this game. That being said, if it keeps going later, their heroes could fall off in strength. Um, yeah. Uh, an Aegis on either Weaver or Death Rock would be really helpful. As well. yep. right now they know Roche is up, but as does the Radiant side, Tree ends once again. Bone Seven is on point and scouting. I think and C9 is just kind of. I mean, C9 can go to Roche, but they gotta be really careful for the back and wall. Because that could, you know, that's the kind of spell, a combination that can you know, win a team fight. Yeah. And if uh, they get a good overgrowth after some of those wall illusions come out and you can't really deal with them, that's when things get scary. Nature's Prophet does now have a Mjolnir up, so there's a lot of lightning bouncing around, and that will help clear up the illusions, but certainly still something to be wary about. Colonel Envy up to 3,500 gold, hasn't picked up anything past the Shivas. He is the one carrying around the gem right now, Dyer's and looking at the Navi vision. They actually have a couple of wards down, one in the jungle and one in uh, the lane here in the mid lane. So a little bit of intel, but still pretty blind around the map as Cloud9 rotate up top, and will look to finish off this outer tower. There's the defusal, though, so Havost has it complete. We'll see how this works out for him. You can just defuse down those fairy on trance one by one. <laughs> yep. It is an eight second cooldown. So not the biggest window for those tower. golems to survive, but part of the deal with the golems is also just the huge AoE stun. And I don't know, I feel like it's just it cripples the both too damage. Damage too much to really be uh, an effective tower. item pickup, but I'll be excited to see how it works in this next team fight. Okay, get some agility, get some armor, some damage. Yeah, That's a little good. bit of mana burn, you know. It's not bad, it's just not a, you know, compare that to something like the beginnings of a Daedalus and just packs a much bigger sure. punch. Yeah, 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 definitely right. There you go. Only the second Diffusal Blade purchased on Weaver in competitive history. The other occurrence was also by Navi, though it was Dendi that picked it up. Fascinating! So I think Doom's gonna buy a team for here now. I'm not sure though, it's not, he's not spending his gold. Yeah, he's just taking his time, what's coming out on the Courier. Had just a couple of wards. Cloud9 will move into the Roche Pit, and the Dire do not have vision of this area, so I'm, I'm sure they're inferring it, but they don't have it. And it is just Bone 7 right now, soloing down Roche. The rest of Cloud9 are grouped up outside of the pit and ready to uh, commence the trap. We will zoom out here and get a handle on the positioning of both sides. Navi will take the high ground near the Dire Ancients, and Cloud9 will group up around the mid. Cloud9 now do a five hero smoke. And they will wrap around FNG in the front lines. They do ping him out, and they're pretty aware that the tree oh, may be trying to break their smoke. They'll find Funnick. He pops his BKB. Back to the wall comes out. And there's the overgrowth of Bada. The solo missed the Damage. Out comes the Golem. And this could be rough for Navi. Exorcism flies. Then he gets off the ultimate, but that upheaval right in the middle of the fight will break things up. Skywrath and Triumph both get picked off. Dendi very low on hit points will make it back, but the Exorcism just doesn't do enough damage. It's an easy two to kill. And now the Exorcism popped and off cooldown. They can take out Dendi here. This is bad news for Navi. Funnick, no BKB available. Will falls. The Rocket Wards come down. Make it a three for nil. Dark Seer will buy back. Doom used on Havos. He's slowed up, and now that the Shikuchi has expired, he will fall. Other buybacks available here. There are a couple, perhaps. The Trian can buy back. Not a hell He'll be able to do. Dendi no longer has the ultimate on. He'll be repelled. Navi could be on a last ledge here. Cloud9 will at the very least get a lane of black. Dyer have a glyph available. Yule out on Dendi, but that's it. FNG calls it. And Cloud9 seal the deal in only 31 minutes of game play. Big one for Cloud9. We need it down the radio. We to get some yeah and not only in the context of star ladder but just a big win for morale as you mentioned they lost to alliance team secret and now taking out navi who beat those other teams that speaks to some of the power of cloud nine and perhaps getting a little bit more comfortable uh, after changing out sing sing